Archetypal Pedagogy, Wikipedia Article Audio Archetypal Pedagogy PDDI is a theory of education developed by Clifford Mays that aims at enhancing psycho-spiritual growth in both the teacher and student. The idea of archetypal pedagogy stems from the Jungian tradition and is directly related to analytical psychology. Clifford Mays, professor in the Brigham Young University McKay School of Education, has developed what he has termed archetypal pedagogy. May's work aims at promoting what he calls archetypal reflectivity in teachers. This is a means of encouraging teachers to examine and work with psychodynamic issues, images, and assumptions as those factors affect their pedagogical practices. Archetypal reflectivity, which draws not only upon Jungian psychology but transpersonal psychology generally, offers an avenue for teachers to probe the spiritual dimensions of teaching and learning in non dogmatic terms. May's most recent work, Teaching and Learning for Wholeness, The Role of Archetypes in Educational Processes, develops his ongoing project of incorporating into Jungian pedagogy the psychoanalytic theories of Heinz Kohut and the object relations theory of Ronald Fairbairn and D.W. Winnicott. Some of May's work in curriculum theory, especially seven curricular landscapes, an approach to the holistic curriculum and understanding the whole student, holistic multicultural education, is concerned with holistic education. Archetypes are, according to Swiss psychologist Carl Jung, innate universal psychic dispositions that form the substrate from which the basic themes of human life emerge. Being universal and innate, their influence can be detected in the form of myths, symbols, rituals and instincts of human beings. Archetypes are components of the collective unconscious and serve to organize, direct and inform human thought and behavior. According to Jung, archetypes heavily influence the human life cycle, propelling a neurologically hardwired sequence which he called the stages of life. Each stage is mediated through a new set of archetypal imperatives which seek fulfillment in action. These may include being parented, initiation, courtship, marriage and preparation for death. Pedagogy, or pedagogy, is the art or science of being a teacher. The term generally refers to strategies of instruction or a style of instruction. Pedagogy is also sometimes referred to as the correct use of teaching strategies. Pedagogy comes from the ancient Greek pedagogia, of Pethys child and go frees the teacher from the impossible burden of feeling that must have all the answers that his characteristic of the omniscient all-knowing authority figure archetypes, the wise one, the great mother and the great father. 113. Student is hero archetype. The student is understood as the novitiate hero who is beginning the individuation quest. 106. Teacher is sage archetype. The novitiate hero meets the wise old man or woman who has already completed his or her archetypal quest. As this sage encourages the novitiate through the guidance of riddles and conundrums, the novitiate's world is deconstructed, thus forcing the novitiate to seek a higher wisdom. 106. Teacher is an archetype of spirit. Mays explores four variations of Jung's idea of teacher's archetype of spirit. 1. Discursive spirituality, teacher as philosopher. 704. 2. Civic spirituality, teacher as national prophet. 706. 3. Ontological spirituality, teacher as in master, counselor, mother. 709. 4. Incarnational spirituality. Teacher as priest. 712. Individuation is a process of psychological differentiation, having for its goal the development of the individual personality. In general, it is the process by which individual beings are formed and differentiated. In particular, it is the development of the psychological individual as a being distinct from the general, collective psychology. An innate need for self realization leads people to explore and integrate these rejected materials. This natural process is called individuation, or the process of becoming an individual. According to Jung, self-realization can be divided into two distinct tires. In the first half of their lives, humans separate from humanity. They attempt to create their own identities. This is why there is such a need for young men to be destructive, and can be expressed as animosity from teens directed at their parents. Jung also said they have a sort of second puberty that occurs between 35 and 40 outlook shifts from emphasis on materialism, sexuality, and having children to concerns about community and spirituality. 
In the second half of their lives, humans reunite with the human race. They become part of the collective once again. This is when adults start to contribute to humanity rather than destroy. They are also more likely to pay attention to their unconscious and conscious feelings. Young men rarely say I feel angry. Or I feel sad. This is because they have not yet rejoined the human collective experience, commonly re-established in their older, wiser years, according to Jung. A common theme is for young rebels to search for their true selves and realize that a contribution to humanity is essentially a necessity for a whole self. Jung proposes that the ultimate goal of the collective unconscious and self-realization is to pull humans to the highest experience. This, of course, is spiritual.